as someone who was sufficiently impressed by Conservative Party policies and history to, 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 to become an MP under their banner, I, mean, I, I often wonder whether conservative-leaning Remainers are the most abandoned constituency in the country at the moment. <laughs> and, well, and now no, you've abandoned them species. further. <laughs> yes. How come that's well, come about? We we tried very, very hard to turn that tanker ship around um, and we fought um, while Theresa May was still Prime Minister to look at a, a very different approach to Brexit, to reach out across the House, to recognise that 5248 um, isn't a 100% licence, that the general election in 17 should have told the Conservatives without a shadow of a doubt that actually we're not so sure about your vision for the future. But she didn't, and she allowed herself to be bullied into the corner, as, as is the way with bullies, you give an inch and they take a mile, and the right wing of the Tory party, literally, it's like a hostile takeover. Um, and that, that one nation tradition, you know, I, I got interested in politics in 2011, 2012, I'm very new to it, and of course that was under the coalition when there was the influence of the Lib Dems on David Cameron at the time. And yes. boy, oh boy, that party, where has that gone? That compassionate, do you remember people used to talk about compassionate Conservatives, One Nation Tories? Um, they are a lesser spotted species now, and it's why people like Philip Lee and Sarah Wollaston and Sam Gima, they've realised also that the Lib Dems, um, it is the only hope um, for a fairer society, one that, you know, that really works for people, has a positive vision. Are you surprised to see Boris Johnson riding the crest of the wave of, of that, that that new look Conservative Party, given that he, as mayor of this city, had fairly well burnished liberal credentials, or, or are you unsurprised? Um, I'm unsurprised at anything um, that yeah. Boris Johnson does, um, because the only thing that's, that you can guarantee is whatever he's doing is he's doing it for himself and to ensure he stays in power. It is his biggest goal in life to get him to number 10, and he will sell the country down the river if populist policies and promising milk and ambrosia um, is what he thinks will get him elected. He's going to do that. And it's um, not only is it shameless, but it is not the level of strategic and national interest thinking I would expect from a prime minister. And he will get caught out. And that's why this unite night to remain, remain alliance will be so important when we end up in that general election, because it is the... Um, the antidote, if you like, the tactical antidote to making sure he doesn't maintain a majority. Uh, you know, he's on minus 40-odd now, so that election's coming. And, and he's, he's, it's already, has it not had some success, this uh, Unite to Remain Alliance in Dominic Grieve's constituency as well? Or is that a different, um, yeah. is that the people's yeah, front the of Judea? Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of groups around. I mean, Dominic is an absolute national hero. Um, he is the most phenomenal brain and has been such an amazing player in this whole Brexit debacle. So yes, it is right that he is uncontested. He is one of the very few independents. In fact, I suspect he may well be the only one um, where the parties um, will consider stepping aside uh, and, because he's done so much for the country. And finally, the, 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 I suppose the elephant in the room or the fly in the ointment or whatever figure of speech you prefer, this cause would be a heck of a lot more powerful if... if the Labour Party were full square behind it, but yeah. there's, there's no way your leader has made it clear, there's no way she would be prepared to serve in a government, even a temporary government led by Jeremy Corbyn. The Labour Party have made it clear they're not prepared to countenance any temporary government that isn't led by Jeremy Corbyn. That looks like a rock and a hard place. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of, there's two issues there. One on the Remain Alliance. Well, the whole point of Remain Alliance is if I'm going to stand down for you in ABC, you have to stand down for me in XYZ. Mm. And clearly, um, the Labour Party as a national party are never going to stand down in seats. Do I hope there'll be some soft peddling, if you like? Um, so to pick a random seat, let's talk about Uxbridge. Um, it is entirely possible that there will be a Lib Dem, a Green candidate there. But I think it's uh, fair to say that the Labour candidate will be the one doing most of the work to make sure that we can see whether you know, we can get Boris Johnson um, taken out of that seat. Um, but on, on the question of the government of national unity, you know, it isn't Joe being obstinate in any way. You hear the phrase parliamentary arithmetic a lot at the moment. It's all about the numbers here. Um, and even within the Labour Party itself, there are enough MPs who would not want to see Jeremy Corbyn, I'm afraid, as that national leader but it's just not going to happen so joe is nothing if not pragmatic and you know we're looking for somebody else you know figures like dominic grieve or yes. margaret beckett i think they're the ones that are probably more likely are you more or less optimistic about uh the prospect of brexit being halted than you were a year ago heidi ellen significantly more really significantly more yeah i can see a little bit of blue sky i really can <laughs> it's been very very bumpy coming through these clouds but